waterfall is a lot of fun. I recommend that when you get the shot, you try to get as little light into the camera as possible. This can be done by making sure that the camera is on one of its smallest apertures. You don't have to dial it all the way down, but you certainly can. Additionally, check the ISO setting. By getting that camera to a lower ISO, it's going to need a longer shutter. Now, you might be wondering, why are we doing this? Well, the goal is to get a really slow shutter, to drag the shutter. You see, by dragging the shutter, the water goes from frozen to really becoming, looking a lot more like cotton candy. This gets you that long, silky water that's just beautiful to look at. It doesn't look all volatile or choppy. Rather, it becomes this fluid stream. This is going to really make it a lot easier to get a great shot. Now, obviously, with this slower type of shooting, a tripod is an absolute must. And because we were driving to these waterfalls, it was easy to use a full-size tripod or a smaller one. I actually ended up shooting with both of my tripods in this situation. The key, though, is take your time. Now, to get the best results with a situation like this, I found that bracketing really came in handy. There's a ton of different things here that you want to see, and because there's all sorts of dynamic range, from bright white fluffy clouds, to the rich blue sky, to dark shadows in some of the trees, the high dynamic range image really allowed me to capture the full range of detail. All right, now that we've got that image captured, why don't we explore the post-production process and putting it all together to make a compelling waterfall image.